Okay, so now that we've established what a jewel box home is about and kind of the parameters and the stats behind it, how does somebody start? And what is the first tip that you would give to somebody if they were in the position like you've described to start creating this celebrated space? Okay. I think the first thing people need to do is look at their space. Now, the thing about a big house is that people feel like, oh, there's all this room. Well, there's also room in a, in a smaller space as well. And how do you make that happen? You put your rooms on a diet. Okay, so look <laughs> at the space you have in your house. And you'll notice that in this room, for example, I don't have it crowded with furniture. The biggest problem most people have in any space, even in larger homes, is too much furniture and it's too big. Okay, so, so kind of like the yeah, empty right. space, like I come from the advertising world and everybody would say like, you know, on the advertising side, give me more white space. And the client would say, no, 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 no. We need to crowd this up with our logo and our product. Mm -hmm. And what I hear you saying here is that the emptiness really helps yes. instead of hurts. That's really true. Lauren, you need it. You need it for the natural walkways. You need it for people to be able to move around the room. And there's just a better sense of, um, there's better feel to the room and it's just more comfortable. So one of the things that also, in addition to putting rooms on a diet is, you wanna look at your furniture. Downsize your furniture. So for example, here I have what you would consider my couch, but it's actually a love seat. Most mm. people buy a couch. Ooh, well, such a great point. And when you buy a couch, look at that couch. And, you, and if you, have you ever seen three people sitting on a couch? Right. Like, yeah. How many butts can you fit in a, on a couch anyway? I mean, that's perfect. That's such a great piece of advice. I love that idea. Put the rooms on a diet. You know, allow for the breathing space. Yep. And what you're saying here, I think, is get furniture to, to scale. Not necessarily. You don't have to buy a sofa when a love seat is a better proportioned piece of furniture for Not that room. Not only better proportion, but also more comfortable. Three mm -hmm. people are never comfortable on a couch. The person in the middle always feels extremely uncomfortable. By your love seat, you've got room for two people, and it gives you more space in the room. And then also what you want to do, another thing is, get your furniture up on legs. In other words, show a little leg on your furniture. You'll Ooh. see that for most of my pieces. Why does that matter? I don't get that. Well, the reason that that works is in any space. It doesn't have to be a small space. Most of these tips apply to anywhere uh, because it, these are things that create beauty. But the reason that you want to get that up is because visually it's more appealing. What would be step number two? Okay. This is something that's a very small thing, but I think it's really important, especially in the jewel box home, and it's, I think, one of my trademarks, if you will, which is flowers. I mm -hmm. love to have fresh flowers, and I think that it's really important because they're living works of art, and they create that sense of beauty in the home, and it's something that you want people who walk into your home to be able to see right away. So pick a spot in your house where you can have fresh flowers, preferably close to the front door. You'll see that mine is very close to the front door. So yeah, it sure see. is. And I and it's funny because when I walked into your house, I came in, so I'm going to um, give myself the tour, and I came in this way, and of course, now Richard's on the phone, but I came in, and I immediately went to this flower arrangement here, and I was completely blown away. And the first question I asked your son was, did your mom do that? And, you know, that really did immediately tell me what a homey place it was. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. I think that having flowers in places where people can see it just makes, it adds beauty and it also adds life. You've got something in the room that um, is living, but also then it creates that sense of people are in this home, this home is being used. It's not just a museum house, if you will, where you walk around but you can't really touch anything. Now I'm not saying that this just, the floral arrangements have to just be um, live flowers. You can also have dried arrangements. I've got one over here we can look at. But they bring color and focus into the room. So this is a lovely one too. And I, when I do my flowers, I tend to pick flowers that I enjoy and I have arrangements that um, are sort of meaningful to me. So this is a dried arrangement. My husband happens to be Italian. You'll see that these are fig leaves and there's some figs on the leaves. So generally speaking, what you want to do in your home is are have things that are meaningful to you and have some sense of, there's some connection there that um, is important to you.